So when we have new buildings, one uh, item to consider is just construction sequencing. And you should consider it early in the design process because what you don't want are building trades um, getting up there, specifically installation of the HVAC or parapet work or those kinds of things occurring after your eco-roof has been installed just because there's going to be compaction, plant material is going to get hit, you might snap off some irrigation heads, those kinds of things. So just when you're talking about the building construction, those things, make sure you mention or at least have a conversation about how is this going to be um, sequenced and ensure that that eco-roof is going to be kind of the last thing or close to the last thing installed um, uh, once the roof is completed. And then on existing buildings, uh, there's usually fewer complications with the trades, but what's important is that many times if you're doing a re-roofing or um, uh, that kind of thing, or there's, you're, you're getting trades up on the roof, many times existing building owners might want to do some equipment upgrades or fixes to their building. So if those items are going to occur during this re-roofing and installation of a new eco-roof, just be sure to have those completed um, prior to installation of the eco-roof. So does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> you know, I guess, yeah, HVAC replacement, parapet flashing, roof penetrations. It's just a good time for existing building owners to get those things done, to get those out of the way before that eco roof gets installed. <clears throat> and then uh, a little bit on water again, but just all the other items that come with the ownership of an eco roof are um, you need some space for those things. And so mechanical rooms are really good places to have items like irrigation controllers. We're recommending that if you're going to put in an irrigation system, put in a flow meter so you know exactly how much water you're using on your roof. We have a flow meter that was installed after the fact. Is that correct, Tom? So after the fact on this roof because, sure, you can design it and you know the gallons per minute of the flow of those irrigation heads and you can do the calculations, but you may not know exactly what those flows are. And you can also then measure if you have a leak or a break or those items as well, you'll be able to see how much water fl um, flowed out of the system. Or if you have a, like a leak, for instance, you can determine that I've had the system off for the last three months and yet it's still, um, the meter is slowly running still. So I think that's just good in general when it comes to uh, irrigation systems. One other part about having a meter is that you can use it as a deduct meter on your sewer fee. So uh, right. we charge sewer fees based, this is a sanitary sewer fee, we charge it based on the water use in a building. So if you're irrigating the roof and uh, that water, if you can track how much you're irrigating, then you can deduct that from the cost. Now, there's a fee for doing that, so there's a certain point where it doesn't pay off to do it but at some point it does, and we can give you information about that separately from this discussion. We'll talk about it more. Are you talking about in your water bill? In your water bill, yes. So there's a, there's a processing fee if you're going to apply for a deduct meter, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, there's a pro well, it's, it's, a, it's a user fee, or a, it's an operational uh, fee of some sort. It's $20 a month, so that's a lot of water, so unless you're using right. more than that. And we're actually hoping that you're going to find a system that doesn't use too much, that you don't even need that, because it's just more trouble. It can mm -hmm. be more trouble than it's worth. Mm -hmm. So the other items that you might have are just pr pruning and mowing tools. You know, if you're up there maybe maintaining it yourself or the building owner's maintaining it. Um, then places to put some of the waste that you might collect. Uh, we've had a couple, um, we've seen some roofs where there might be a pile of composting debris. Uh, in a corner, and it's unfortunate because there's, it detracts a little bit from the aesthetics, but yet, because there, there really wasn't a place designed to put it. So encompass not only just that this design is going to be beautiful and you're going to have sedum, but there's also going to be some things that are come, come with it. So just do what you can to include these other items that are um, maybe not as directly impacting the aesthetics or the design of the system, but are make it easier for maintenance crews and those things to use this and to maintain it. Uh, waste and recycling containers, and then also just rooftop access and footpaths, you know, <clears throat> knowing that, acknowledging the fact that the HVAC units may need to be maintained or used, talk with the building maintenance 
crew or whoever might be maintaining that stuff, ask them where they would prefer to have footpaths, and just acknowledge that that's going to be something that you shouldn't put sedums there because they just will be uh, walked on consistently throughout the lifetime of the roof. And then also just access, you know, out of doorways and those kinds of things if you're going to be wanting to uh, walk around or check the perimeter of the uh, eco roof. You know, maybe you'll put in a couple of uh, footpaths just to reduce the impact of that uh, onto the vegetation. If, uh, if your client asks, um, what is the additional maintenance that we need to consider in terms of uh, labor? Or what are the things? Does it have to do with the type of vegetation? Or can you say it is free? Or yes, it will be on the FTE? Or we're, gonna get, we're definitely going to get it. We have a whole section on operations and maintenance uh, next week. Um, but uh, it's a good, so it's a good question. I hope we will answer it then.